The gentleman from Ohio, Dr. Wenstrup. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm grateful that we're having this hearing today. Commissioner Werfel, I want to thank you for being here. I look forward to working with you uh, throughout and appreciate your candor today. Uh, and I do want to make a plug for my IRS advocate at home. I will tell you that we've had great success, good relationship working there. Sometimes it's unfortunate we have to go to the advocate as much as we do, uh, but that cooperation has been good, and I just think it's good to give some good feedback here and it's there. great to hear. Uh, the couple topics I'd like to ask you about today, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, my staff back home has been working for several months now with constituents who are having trouble getting their employee retention tax credits released because they've contracted with a professional employer organization or PEO for payroll and related tax duties. And from what I understand, the PEO and IRS are following the law, trying to resolve the issue, but it's been more than six months uh, of ongoing casework now. And it, it seems that the use of the PEO is what's delaying them from getting their, their, their tax credit released. And, um, you know, I know you mentioned before the phone's being answered more quickly. Well, that's good. That's a good first step. But resolving the issues, too, is, is really the ultimate step. Yes. So if you don't mind, how is the IRS handling this PEO-related ERTC claims and, and the delays that are taking place? Yeah, it's, it, I, I am concerned about... Um, about any time we have a, a, a backlog um, and we need to focus on it. And what happened during the filing season is we moved and concentrated our personnel resources on the phone to make sure we were answering the phone. We've made progress on the backlog. Um, during filing season, we were resolving and processing about 20,000 employee retention credits a week, but that was not enough to keep up with the demand because more come in. There's still eligibility through 2025, so this is a, a growing uh, target, not a stable one. At the, now that the filing season is over, we can reset our staffing. I'm hoping that we can more than double the rate, to closer to 40 to 50,000 resolved a week. Plus, we have teams looking at ways we can improve the process and, and be more uh, aggressive in our efforts to, to manage that backlog. So it is an absolute priority. It's got my attention, and we're, uh, you know, and, and I'm holding people to uh, to more aggressive targets inside the IRS. I appreciate that, and glad to have this opportunity to discuss the awareness of the issue uh, that you seem to have. Shifting gears to IRS strategic operation operating plan, I want to ask you specifically about the energy security lines and the IRA allocations. Summary table on page 129, and the FTE table on page 131. For context, the SOP allocates just $3.2 billion to taxpayer services. Even the National Taxpayer Advocate noted in a recent blog post that the funding in this plan was, quote, disproportionately allocated for enforcement activities, and that the, end quote, and that the IRS needed to, quote, not lose sight of its core mission. So I look at the $3.2 billion allocated for taxpayer services, which is seemingly woefully inadequate as a share of the total funding here, and I'm wondering why more than one-third of that is earmarked for energy security because the SOP lays out five transformation objectives, dramatically improve services, quickly resolve issues, focus, uh, expanded enforcement, deliver tech improvements, recruit and retain a workforce. Those are all challenges. I, I get it. And then there's this energy security line item uh, tacked on after those five objectives. And under the taxpayer services, this energy security is siphoning off $1.2 billion, uh, quickly resolving taxpayer issues when they arise for objective number two is another quote. Um, let me just cut to the chase. What specifically about the, those 1,800 new IRS employees um, what will they be doing to support energy security that warrants a specific line item rather than funding improved tax administration through the five uh, transformational objectives? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and just lifting up for one moment, you know, just the tax code is constantly changing and, and the Inflation Reduction Act changed. But even before that, 
between July 2019 and December 2022, there were 950 amendments enacted under the Internal Revenue Code. And what that means is, and that's in Congress's wisdom and, and the President's wisdom to sign out those, what that means is it changes the forms, it changes the types of questions that we get, it changes the type of processing that we need to do, and we need to make those adjustments. The energy-related credits in the IRA are new, and there's some novel elements to them. And so we have to do what we're doing now, which is we've uh, issued uh, rounds of, of public comment, ask for information, we're doing advance and notice of proposed rulemaking. We also have to hire more people to be in the phone center because calls will come in with questions on, am I eligible or not? How is this working? New forms will come in that we'll have to assess. We'll have to have strong program integrity. So that those funds are really dedicated to administration of these new tax provisions. The gentleman's time has expired.